Does this mic work? I can't hear myself, so I hope it's working. Well, so we're here for, okay, now I can hear. We're here for another Shikan conference. How many were here last year? Hmm. So many more this year, and it shall continue getting better and better and better. So please, a big round of applause to Izumi and everybody who has put this together. I can assure you, it's definitely not easy to do this. You know, I came across a cartoon the other day, and I believe it depicts very well what the challenge is. It's too loud. Can you turn down? Yeah, okay. It depicts what the challenges of a woman is, what she must face on a day-to-day -day basis. In the picture that you're seeing on your screen, you can see that a typical man has a very, very, very clear path before him. What do you see before a woman? Is that a true picture? And that's why I titled my keynote address, The Struggle of a Driven Woman. Because you have so much to contend with. You have obstacles to navigate. And at the same time, you're competing with a man in the workplace. You see, on the surface of things, it seems as if the odds are stacked heavily against a woman. That you must fail in any competition that you go for. And that is what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Indeed, it's not only in the entrepreneurial space. We also see this happen in the workplace. We see it in philanthropic work. We see it everywhere that the high expectation of men to automatically, automatically be given the best and women should be given the secondary stuff is the norm. Now the question is begged of us in this society that where did this notion come from? Where is this notion that a woman must be saddled with domestic work while the man is responsible for making all the money and having all the fun? Where have we developed this concept that the woman is the weaker sex and therefore should be compensated the least while the man is the alpha male and must get the lion's share of everything. You see, in a society like Nigeria, which is very religious, the Bible and the Quran are used viciously to establish the role that a woman's place is in the home. A woman's place is that she must be submissive and she must reverence men everywhere, anywhere, anytime, any place. So I want to start by my own interpretation of what the Bible says. It's my belief that when God created man, he did so without differentiating man from woman as we know it in the physical. Indeed, the Bible uses the phrase man but in describing who he was creating in the spiritual, God created and it was clear that he created male and female at the same time. Now that's my reading. I believe that at the time that he created man and woman, spiritually, he did not differentiate between their rights, abilities, access to heavenly realms, and qualities, etc. Now, this is not a sermon. I know I'm an ordained minister. But permit me, please, for the next few minutes, to just establish what I've just said through scripture so that it's not as if I'm making all of this up. So, permit me, a few minutes. Now, Genesis 1, 26, 27. I just said that man and woman were created at the same time. So, where do I get this information? The Bible says, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. We know this passage very well. But I want us to pay attention to the next line because it is critical in establishing what I said. It says, so God created man in his own image. Now listen to this. 
In the image of God, he created him. So far, it sounds as if we're talking about man. And then he goes on and says, male and female, he created them. At the same time. Male and, at the same time, he created them. Now, it's clear that while God said, let us make man in our image, he proceeded to doing so. But the Bible is clear that he created man, male and female, spiritual, at exactly the same time. It's therefore, in my opinion, the biggest lie and the biggest fraud from the pit of hell that says that a woman is created less than a man by God. As far as, as, far, as, far as God is concerned, as far as our creator is concerned, men and women are created equal in his sight. Male and female beings are spiritual equals before God. So let no man ever tell you as a woman that you are less than them. No man is superior to you. Now some people don't even realize that it was only after the creation of the spirit male and female that God now went to create the physical man. So we started in Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Now the Bible progresses to Genesis 2, 7. Genesis 2, 7. And that's where it says, 2, 7, second chapter. Second chapter, not the first. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and breathed life and he became a living being. So my physical man came after the creation of woman and after the creation of man. Later still, God then said, in Genesis 2, 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable. Not a helper under. Comparable. To him. In Genesis 2, 23, And this should be the last scripture, and then I will go. I think by then I would have established my, my point. And Adam said, now, this is the bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh, so far, everything together, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she's taken out of man. God created a comparable helper, one who is comparably physical to man. In creating his physical attributes, he was very clear to give us very unique, distinct features, but unique and distinct to work together. So no matter how hard we try, the man will always carry the sperm. No matter how hard we try, the woman would always have a womb. Distinct, different, but working together to create what God wants us to be. The man may be physically stronger, but the woman almost always is either mentally or emotionally stronger. Together, we must work. The folly of today's world and the message we pass on to our sons and daughters is that men and women must compete on equal terms and conditions Therefore, saying that what a man can do, a woman can do better. Is that possible? Don't mind my slides, eh? We must have some humor. But in this, I must humbly defer. There are many physical things that a woman can do that a man cannot do. And very many things that a man can do physically that a woman cannot do. It's pure foolishness to believe otherwise. No matter how hard, no matter how hard I try, I can never produce breast milk. No matter how hard I try. Can I? God was very deliberate in differentiating the physical attributes of man and woman to ensure that each of us is unique in our special way. And one will always, always need the other to coexist, to coexist in this world. Nevertheless, 
He was also deliberate in not allowing man, physical man, to gloat over the ephemeral attributes that he was to distribute. And this is why man, when he abuses the weaker sex, is abusing what God created. The intelligence of a being is not measured by whether he's male or female at all. It's God that determines. You will find many women that are far more intellectually superior than men. And you will find many men that are far more intellectually superior than women. The ability to excel in oratory, literacy, poetry, or any academic field you may choose is neither a preserve of the male or the female species. In any field that you choose to delve into academically, you will find that you can excel, whether male or female. In the area of leadership the world over, you will find men and women that excel, each in their own given endeavor. Many of those pictures, many of those photographs there, you will recognize the individuals there. It has nothing to do with whether you are a man or a woman. And so the question we must ask ourselves is why is it the case that you have women continually struggling? Why do men feel that they are the ones that are on top? What has led to this? I have my own theories, so allow me to share just a few with you. The first is that the home is where the problem begins. How we bring up our children is where the problem begins. To a large extent, it's already been ingrained in us that the home is where the women have control. But the home is a place where both the man and the woman have responsibilities. If you leave it only to the women, you're going to have a problem. A big problem. And so the job of husband and wife is to instill in both their sons and daughters that while they are unique, while they are different physically, they both have a place to play in the leadership in the world. It's very important that we do not bring our girls up by telling them consistently that their place is in the kitchen, that their place is in the home. No, they are not. Allow them to express what God has given to them. Together, we can build a great home. What did God give Adam? He gave him the responsibility to care for the garden. The responsibility of the home belongs to the man. The woman works together with them to give their children the belief that they can do and achieve anything. Two, they must live by example. You and I must live by example. Children learn from what they see and they learn from those who are closest to them. The first people that your daughters and your sons are going to learn from are you, the parents. The world operates on a spiritual principle that whatsoever you sow, you reap. And so you will find a house where the husband is abusive to the wife, beats her, abuses her, diminishes her over and over again. The son, and I've seen this many times, the son grows up hating what the father does to the mother. Gets married, and guess what happens? He does exactly the same to his wife. What you sow, you reap. It's extremely important that you live by example. A house and a home that is built on love will reap love. A home that encourages the girl child and the boy child to know that they are both distinct but can compete, that they are both distinct but can work together, that each of them in love can be a leader, will reap exactly the same. Please remember that in your home, whatever you sow, you will reap. Number three, by exposure. 
Children must be exposed to making choices. And they must learn the consequence of their choices in life early. The girl child must be raised not to be afraid of being decisive. Not to be afraid of standing for what she knows is right. She must be encouraged to compete intellectually against all sexes, male and female. And she must never, never be raised to be ashamed that she's a woman. Never. You have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. I hear women say that if I'm coming back again, I want to come back as a man. God forbid. Do not be ashamed of who you are. You were never created as a mistake. There will always be those who are physically stronger than you. There will always be those who are physically weaker than you. The key is that you must raise your children and raise yourself to be confident in who you are at all times. Let the child know that while they are created differently, boy and girl, with different physical attributes and capabilities, but the things that make her a woman and the things that make him a man are unique and special and certainly not created in any way less than the other. Culture and tradition. This is a big one because many cultures and traditions demand total submission from the woman. They demand that the women are silenced, curbed, relegated to the background, exempted from decisions that affect the society, the community, the state, or even the nation. They are barred from leadership, religious, secular, or otherwise. And therefore, this reinforces the notion that a woman's place is fully beneath a man. So here is where controversy will rage. I'm confronted many times with the challenges in marriages where a man accuses a woman of not being submissive. Wherever I have had problems where I'm trying to solve in counseling a divorce issue or a separation issue, if I ask the man what the problem is, almost 90% of the time, they accuse the woman of not being submissive. It's therefore taken as a right that women must submit to the man as the head of the house. And therefore, it proves that the man is superior over the woman. In this, I beg to differ. A man is commanded, commanded, commanded. In that same verse that they quote all the time, I think Ephesians 5, 23 or so. A man is commanded to love their wives. Commanded because men, us, we are not wired to love. So God had to command us. Women, naturally, they can love. You are uniquely created to love. Why? Because you have a womb. You carry children. You love them. You nurture them. You have nine months to learn to love. So God had to command us men. Love your wives. And when you love, what do women do when they are loved? They naturally submit. You can never force a spirit to submit. You are created equal. So every woman that is shown love willingly and truly will submit. You don't need to force it. It's effortless. Because submission is a natural response to love. Please, every husband and man that is here, note that God commanded us to love. The commandment. Number five, by collaboration. The world today is driven more by competition than by collaboration. Indeed, collaboration is deemed to be a weakness in many circles. Whereas the idea of extreme competition Survival of the fittest. Winner takes all. You must get it at all costs. That is the new mantra. That mentality is what people are pushing. The mindset is not only setting men against men. It's also setting women against women. When you look at creation in its purest form, purest form, you find that nature thrives best when the elements collaborate. Man is at their utmost best when collaboration is at the center of human endeavor. It says that if you want to do things quickly, do it alone. You want to get to a place, do it alone. But you want to go far, you want to do it better, do it together. 
the idea of extreme feminism is just as destructive as male chauvinism is. Certainly, she can do more, but not at the detriment of not, not at the detriment of men. After all, what is it said now? Competition, collaboration is the new competition. The perfect balance in creation is when the male and the female species understand their unique and distinct functions and they operate together, together in perfect uh, harmony. Yin Yang, it's as old as time. Where that balance is not existing, you would always have trouble. So how then are women, you women here, how then are you supposed to live and strive and excel in a world that already believes that men are the best gifts that the world has been given? That if you are not born a man, you cannot, you're sorry for you. So how do you survive in that? By doing the following things. Females. Title F, focus. Know yourself. Just know who you are. Focus on who God made you to be. Love yourselves. Accept that you are the best thing that God has made for the time and season that you are in. Focus. Two, endure. Never give up. No matter what you hear, no matter what they say, you are never less than who you are. Endure. Don't give up. The M is for manifest. You have been giving gifts that are so unique to you. Nobody else can do what you can do. Find it. Know your purpose. Work in it. Nobody can be a better you. You are the best version of yourself that you can ever be. Know your purpose and work on it. A. Articulate. Set your priorities. Just set it. This is your purpose. You are created beautifully before God. You will focus and not give up. Articulate what your priorities in life are. Set it and target it. Alpha locate. See your future. It's a vision. Just picture yourself. I had some students a few weeks ago when I was speaking in University of Port uh, in Port Harcourt, River State University in Port Harcourt. Ask them, picture yourself five years from now. Picture yourself 10 years from now. Picture yourself 20 years from now. And ask them, push it. See yourselves in 50 years. It's not that far. They were 18. I said, push yourself. 50 years, where do you see yourself? And I ask you the same thing. In 50 years' time, where do you see yourselves? Believe me, you'll still be alive. 50 years is not that far. If you push and you see yourself in 50 years, if you can see it, you can achieve it. So please, locate your future. See it and drive it. Then, determine to excel. Be the best at what you do. Whatever, whenever, at any point in time, determine that you are the best at that time. Just be the best. The Bible says it beautifully. It says, find, see ye, a man, see ye, anyone, diligent, diligent, in their works. And they will stand before who? Kings. Just be the best there. And I guarantee you there is nowhere in life that you will not find yourself. Be the best. Be your best. Just determine it at any point in time to be your best. And lastly, determine to succeed. Never, ever, never speak down to yourself. More times than not. It's not what people tell us that brings us down. It's what we tell ourselves. I'm not good enough. I can't achieve it. I'm not brain enough. I didn't go to school enough. I don't have enough degrees. I don't have this. I'm not a man. I can't do that. It's what you say to yourself is what brings you down. Never speak down to yourself. First thing in the morning, when you wake up, if you are the praying type, when you wake up, say a prayer that today you are going to be the best. Today you are going to do exploits. Today you are going to make a difference. Today you will change somebody's life. Say whatever will make you feel good today. 
most important time of the day. The next most important time of the day that you must speak to yourself just before you go to bed. They tell you that dreams are a multitude of your thoughts. Your last thoughts play a big deal in what you do when you sleep. So speak to yourself again. Thank you, God, for doing this. Thank you that I impacted somebody. Thank you that I did well. Thank you that I achieved my goals. Thank you that I finished everything that I had to do today. Thank you that tomorrow is going to be another day. Thank you that tomorrow will be better than today. What you say to yourself will determine how far you go. But please, never ever speak down to yourself. Now let me conclude by letting each of you into a secret that you may already know, so it's not so much of a secret, but please don't be afraid to embrace it. I apologize to the men in the crowd. The men know this secret, but they don't want us, they don't want the women to know. Men are afraid of successful women. True or false? So this is what I say to the women. Please let them be afraid. Let them be. Whose problem is it? Is it your problem? Whose problem? It's their problem, not your problem. Please succeed. Two, it isn't only women that can do more. Men need to do more as well. Not so. Who will push the men to do more? Who? Women. My wife pushes me to do more. My daughter pushes me to do more. They encourage. Without women, we will not do more. Look for a man that is ready to chase a woman. How much does he do? He does more. When he wants to get married and he has found his fiance, what does he do? He does more. Without a woman, do you think he will do more? Push us, please. Let us do more. Any society that has only, only men in functional positions will fail. Guaranteed. Just look around the world. Any society that does not look for, appreciate, lift up, put women in positions, fails. It's called a dysfunctional society. God did not create societies like that. Please do not let that happen. It's not just a man's responsibility, it's yours as well. Any society that has only women in functional positions will what? It will fail as well. Please don't strive for that. That's extreme feminism. I want to push all the men away. Let women hold everything. It won't work. It will fail too. The most developed and functional society is the one that respects the contribution of all its citizens. All. Men and women. Please aim for that. Aim for it. The power to change the dynamics of how women are treated lies in the hands of mothers. If you are a mother, please start changing that dynamic today. It lies in your hands. You be the change. Finally, there is nothing impossible to the determined mind. If you are a driven woman, if you are a determined woman, there is nothing you cannot achieve. So I only have one word for you. Do not give up. Don't, no matter what you face. So I end with this. What is my vision for the future Nigeria? You must have a vision. I asked you to have a vision. So what's my vision? As some of you heard in my profile, I left everything that I built for 23 years so that I can go into government and begin to run in politics. Why? Because this is my vision. As far as women is concerned, it's a place where women are free, free to express themselves without fear of persecution. Because I see that every time that a woman expresses themselves, they do so with fear. Because somebody will persecute them, sack them, dismiss them, do something, or send them away from their home. I see a Nigeria where women are able to interact freely without fear of being abused where they can speak without fear of being intimidated, where women can contribute fully without fear of being dismissed, shut down, shut up. 
I say Nigeria where they can expect justice, justice, without fear of being victimized. Many women don't report assault, they don't report crimes, they don't report anything that is done to them. They don't even go to their family members to tell them that there's a problem in the home because they fear that they will be victimized. I say Nigeria, and I pray for this, where women can traverse freely, they can move north to south, east to west, without fear of being raped at any point in time. I want to see a Nigeria where there is an appreciation for the gift that a woman is to the nation. Where her God-given attributes are brought into play to create a better Nigeria, that Nigeria where all of us can be proud to call our home. If there is one thing I believe that she can do more, every woman, it is to push for this Nigeria. And women, please do not relent. Don't give up. Don't allow us to give up. Don't let your children give up until we achieve the Nigeria of our dreams. God bless you. Thank you.